So if you're like me, then horror may seem a little stale as of lately. By and large, it seems that studios are just trying to get numbers up and are repeating tried old tropes. But if you're also like me, then I think I may have a solution. Internet horror allows for a lot more creativity and a lot more independence when it comes to how a work is portrayed. But that's a catch-22 because it can be a mixed bag. Some can be fantastic and others not worth your time. So let me point you in the direction of one of the former, Gemini Home Entertainment. Gemini Home Entertainment is a YouTube channel that currently consists of 15 episodes. The creator of the series, Remy Abode, has done a fantastic job at creating a true analog horror. For those that don't know, analog horror is similar to projects such as Local 58 that managed to inject a horror system inside of the confines of an analog setting. In other words, if you think of old TV broadcast stations and how those can be used for horror elements, along those lines. Not only from a horror perspective, but Remy is incredibly talented at telling a subversive story behind the scenes through these incredible 3D models that he creates himself. Today I'm going to be going through the main plot of Gemini Home Entertainment and analyzing what the story might be. However, I highly encourage you, if this seems interesting at all, that you check out the original channel which I have linked in the description as it is criminally underrated and also check out Remy's Patreon which I have also linked because Gemini Home Entertainment itself is not monetized and this guy deserves the support. Also if this is interesting to you I did a video on another analog horror series Local 58 early on in my channel which will also be linked below. I also want to give a massive thank you. So I love researching and recording videos like this but I hate editing them. So a massive thank you to Caitlin, who is editing this currently, uh, for being a huge hand and letting me do stuff like this without hating half of the process. So her Twitter is going to be linked below. Uh, if you all enjoy the way that this video looks, I encourage you to follow her and let her know because it was really appreciated and allows more content like this to come out. So thank you, Caitlin. And last but not least, I have to mention that Inside of Mind another YouTube channel which I enjoy made a video on Gemini Home Entertainment and the points that they talked about are different from the points that I'm going to be talking about today so if this seems interesting to you I encourage you to check that video out it will also be in the description oh yeah and how could I forget this guy this little dude right here two weeks left to get him link in description as always thank you all so much for watching and let's get into it hey son sorry to bother you there I was just thinking that since you're growing up and since you're becoming a man now, it was time that we had a bit of a conversation. You're growing up, you're maturing, and it's time that we talked about something that's going to be very important to you in the next few years. And that's a good wallet. And what better wallet could I suggest than the Ridge Wallet? See, everyone's got to adapt with the times. And gone are the days of having a wallet full of 500 different cards that you never use and never sets in your pockets comfortably. Which is why Ridge is the do-it-all wallet in the smallest possible device you can get. To give you an idea, I put in this wallet every single card that I use on a daily basis, and as you can see it is still way thinner than my old wallet with nothing in it. The Ridge wallet allows you to fit 12 cards inside of its very small frame comfortably. Not only that, but everyone needs to have some cash on them as well, and Ridge wallet has got you covered with this handy little money clip. So rather than having a massive bulky wallet that gets in your way all the time, you can carry it all in something that's smaller than your phone. Not only that, but the wallet has such durable construction that Ridge has a lifetime warranty on all their products. The construction also makes it RFID proof. In other words, people can't use the electronic devices to steal your card's information. And to top it all off, it comes in over 30 different models and colors, meaning it's secure, it's durable, it's slim, and it's cool. So in order to get you all set up, I have teamed up with Ridge to offer you guys 10% off with discount code Windigoon. And to make the deal even sweeter, you can use the wallet for up to 45 days and then send it back for a full refund. Because Ridge has such confidence in their products, and they should. Because I know after you get your hands on this thing, you're not going to want to get rid of it. So once again, discount code Windigoon. Link is in the description. Thank you so much to Ridge for sponsoring this video, and thank you all for watching. The first episode is known as World's Weirdest Animals. It starts off as a standard nature documentary in rural Minnesota and focuses on different specific counties showing prairie chickens and burrowing owls and everything seems fine until it flips and says we are now looking at something that is everywhere across North America and it's specifically a creature known as wood crawlers. Now as far as specifics of everything that I'm going to talk about, 
at the end I'm going to go back and analyze and try to put the pieces together but for now I'm just laying out the puzzle. It says that the wood crawlers are expert hunters and they nest in the home of large families. This is because as the video says it allows them to adapt easier along with the comforting message that you will hear screaming they stole their voices. It also says to burn the bodies lest they stand up again. So we've established that whatever this wood crawler is, it infests the homes of families as a means to adapt. We then receive footage of something called nature's mockery. For now, to make it easier in the future, nature's mockery and wood crawlers are synonymous. We then flip over to outside of the house where it seems from found footage we are watching someone approach a house that has just been infested with wood crawlers. After watching these things that look like people stand still and sort of float across the ground, we're then greeted with the title showing that they are quote, fake people. We then see one of them off to the side moving their jaw in a very odd manner as if they're trying to figure out how the movement works. This is before our cameraman is seen and chased away, ending the first film. As I mentioned, a lot of this may seem confusing at first, but hopefully as I go through explaining these, some of it starts to make more sense. Our second video is called Storm Safety Tips, and it's brought to us by someone known as Harbinge Technologies. This is our first mention of a specific company or entity making one of these videos. That will become more important as they go along, but just keep in mind that whenever I mention who makes one of these videos, just to hold on to it. Storm safety tips, similar to World's Weirdest Animals, seems to begin as a simple infomercial. This one is to instruct families on how to prepare for a storm, and while it seems normal at first, it then tells you to prepare a structure that is a 10 by 18 foot room with a four to five foot hemisphere in the middle of the room. Not only that, but to then place a radio by the sphere itself. The messages then become even more odd as it says to only turn on the radio in the case of an emergency. It then says, in the event of the storm, quietly go to the bunker your home does not belong to you now immediately we see a difference here that this is not related to any ordinary storm but as was mentioned in world's weirdest animals and will be mentioned later flip the word storm with swarm and this starts to make more sense it then says that whatever you hear through the radio is a hallucination and that your tears are filled with salt which is concerning it says after the storm is passed listen for movement inside. We then get the very curious message of look to the field, do you see the lights, return to your bunker. We're then greeted by footage of lights in the middle of the field before the message then switch and tells us to listen under your feet. This is implying that whatever swarm has infected the house is still there. We then finally get the image of a speaker or something that appears to be a speaker on top of a tower before the video ends. So Harbinge Technologies, whatever this entity is, is trying to inform us what to do if a storm or swarm attacks. We then start to figure out more of what's going on in our third video, The Deep Blue. This one's done by Geneva Production Company and seems to be a documentary about the ocean. As usual, everything seems normal at first, even though several of the facts mentioned are not correct, until we get to the Marianas Trench. We then see a fictional tunnel off to the side of the Marianas Trench known as the Demesia Tunnel, which whose depth is unknown. We're then greeted by the image of this tentacle eye thing at the bottom of the ocean before transmission is cut off. This Demesia Tunnel implies that whatever's affecting us comes from somewhere very deep within the earth, and perhaps the culprit responsible is this squid looking thing with a giant glowing eye. Not only that, but the light we see on top of the squid is incredibly familiar to the light seen in the field at the end of storm safety tips. So whatever this thing is at the bottom of the ocean, it seems that several of them have come out of the ocean and are now the danger that we have to be afraid of. In our fourth video known as artificial computer learning, we see a program from Regnad Computing. Regnad is demonstrating the capabilities of their AI program. This is done by showing generational learning, or in other words, every iteration of a computer's processing gets better as it learns as time goes on. This is demonstrated by telling the computer to write a short children's storybook to which every iteration will become more clear. It is during this time that we're introduced to two very important names that will come up later, which is Jack and Mary. The first iteration seems simple enough where it talks about Jack and Mary running and looking for a secret place. And then in Gen 2, it starts to get weird where the last line of the story is, I hear you. We then get some more important details in Generation 3, 
where it says that Mary went down the river that Jack went over and that the river does not flow with water. And then with Gen 4, we get a very foreboding message about Jack that says, Jack heard again, voice from space, I have become something else. And then finally, with our final iteration, it says, listen to the silver box, stars moving, the hungry eye, here I am. And we then receive an image of the tentacle eye thing shown in the deep blue. So for one, we have a name for this tentacle eye thing, which it's referred to as the hungry eye. Also, the details we get in the children's storybook are interesting. We're going to see later here that this is not a children's storybook at all, and instead an actual entity telling us these things. But what we get from the story mentioned is that Jack managed to get away and Mary did not. We then see that Jack heard a voice from space in some regard and became something else. In our final message, it says, listen to the silver box. The only reference to something similar to a silver box that we've gotten so far is that of the radio mentioned in Storm Safety Tips. So this is conflicting information because in Storm Safety Tips it said do not listen to the radio and now we're hearing do listen to the radio. But at the end of that same stanza, the hungry eye says here I am, implying that it is the hungry eye speaking. So best to probably listen to Storm Safety Tips rather than the eye tentacle. Thing. The story itself becomes more comprehensible with the fourth iteration of our solar system. Again, as the others, it opens up like a normal info show before it gets to Earth and says Earth is one of the only planets in the solar system to contain life. And then when it gets to Saturn, it says that the rings of Saturn are the gateway. But then it gets really weird whenever we get to the planet Neptune, and it says that Neptune is the lens and has been mutated. We then see the iris appear. It then says that the iris is with us now, laughing at us, before saying behold as the iris itself begins to move on camera. We then see a shot of a sort of laser or light from Neptune, leaving Neptune and going through the solar system towards Earth. Now, while I can't be sure if this thing, the iris, is Neptune after it's been mutated, or if it's a new entity itself, I believe it's a new entity itself, as it says the iris is now with us, as if it came from somewhere else. What it seems happened is whenever this iris appeared, it attacked Neptune first. As it said, Neptune's been mutated. And then whatever happened to Neptune is now happening on Earth. In the sixth episode, Camp Information video, we find out about something known as Moonlight Acres Family Camp. During the activity section where it talks about everything to do at this camp, it mentions something known as the Harvest. In the description, it says that the Harvest is the lights in the sky event that the camp is known for. These lights, once again, are very similar to that of the Hungry Eye, which was seen in Storm Safety Tips. When talking about the cabins and accommodations at Moonlight Acres, it says that they are burrow free, which is the burrow that was mentioned in World's Weirdest Animals. In other words, whatever these wood crawler things are, are advertised as not being in the camp. When talking about safety equipment, we see the same tower that was shown in Storm Safety once again. The only true sign of warning we see is to not answer the knock at the door. When talking about the mythos and legends of the camp, it says that in 1935, well-dressed men appeared to the camp and every night would visit the counselor's cabin. It says that eventually a deal was made and the men no longer came around. It then talks about legends of skinwalkers that appeared around the camp. We then see another visual of the hungry eye before we then move into a category called Vessels. It shows different people who worked at the camp and how each of them were a Vansel because they quote, answered the door, before finally cutting to another image of the Hungry Eye and saying that it is what asked to enter. The episode then ends when the door that has been knocked at is opened. So what all did we see in that one? Well, for one, we see the mention of skinwalkers, which in traditional legend is a creature that can transform itself to look like a human. These skinwalkers are mentioned immediately after it says strange men used to visit the counselor's cabin. So because of this, we can infer that it was skinwalkers that were approaching the camp counselor. Now, where else in this story have we seen a legend of things that look like people? That would be the fake people or wood crawlers that were mentioned in the first episode. So these wood crawlers or skinwalkers came to the camp counselor and eventually struck a deal and no longer bothered them. So, while keeping that in mind, remember that this camp advertises their harvest or light in the sky event. Not only that, but at the end, whenever we figure out that the hungry eye is the thing that knocked at the door, or the skin crawlers disguised as humans, that the vessels open the door, or in other words, people that later became the mobiles for these creatures. It'll get more specific as these videos go on, 
But for now, we can see that whatever these things are and however they're taking over the Earth, it's been happening for a very long time, since at least 1935. Our next episode is titled Lethal Omen Commercial. This is for a video game created by Regnad Computing, the same people who did the Artificial Intelligence episode. It advertises in the game that you fight enemies in what appears to be the Moonlight Acres family camp. This is confirmed whenever a newspaper on the ground talks about how the up-and-coming Light in the Sky event has been cancelled. Not only that, but next to the main office we can see a safety tower that was again mentioned in the storm safety tips. The game seems to be going normally until near the end the player comes across a sort of flesh or amalgamation of plants with what appears to be a person inside of it. Shortly afterwards a new enemy appears slowly lumbering and moving in janky motions towards the player which cannot be killed. Running away, the player comes across a bunker and after going inside, we see it's the exact bunker from Storm Safety due to the dimensions of the room, the hemisphere in the middle, and the radio next to the hemisphere. As the player's standing there, a wood crawler begins to burst in before it then cuts to the middle of the night in the camp. The player turns around, sees the iris shown in our solar system, before cutting out and ending the episode. So we see that Regnad Computing is at least knowledgeable enough about what's happening at Moonlight Acres to make this game around it. And aside from the previous mentioned references to past episodes, such as the sort of speaker tower and the bunker, we see new things shown, such as the slowly lumbering creature and the plant thing with the person inside of it. Also, this is really cool you can actually play Lethal Omen. As a matter of fact, I did so on a live stream, which was my first live stream on this channel. If you go to the Lethal Omen episode of Gemini Home Entertainment, it's linked in the description. You can play it. There's multiple endings. It's really cool. I'm not going to link it here below because that means you have to go to the original video to get it so this guy can get more traffic because once again, he deserves it. The next episode is Jack Wilder's Wilderness Survival Guide. As is common with these things at this point, everything seems fine talking about survival gear until talking about how to deal with wild animals and we get to the bear as the person walks away we see the bear transform into something else then in the plant life section we see something called nature's mockery now this is twofold as nature's mockery is what the wood crawler was described as in world's weirdest animals and the image that we're seeing on screen is very similar to the plant thing seen in Lethal Omen. It says that if contact is made with nature's mockery, the person will receive hallucinations, sudden muscular paralysis, body disfigurement, and flesh decay. Then in the next section, when it talks about sounds to avoid, one of the ones that is said to be avoid is screaming, and it's described as auditory hallucinations. Keep in mind, auditory hallucinations is the same thing that Storm Safety Tip said would come out of the radio. We're then given instructions on how to make a fire before it says, if the fire fails, follow the lights. Which, as we've talked about, given the hungry eye and all, lights at this point are not a good thing. We then switch back to a handheld camera. We then hear screaming before the camera gets to a man in a field who it seems that that's where the screams are coming from, but he's just standing there. As a matter of fact, this person moves very similarly to the fake people seen in World's Weirdest Animals. And to top it off, the way that this thing is moving is similar to the unkillable enemy in Lethal Omen. It then talks about if any scratches are obtained while out to rip the foreign object from body, which will be something that applies in a minute, before we get a final shot of this quote-unquote person in a window, standing very similarly to the way that these fake people stood in the first episode. So this wilderness survival guide is trying to teach people how to stay away from these creatures, both nature's mockery and whatever these skinwalker things are. So much so that it says if you hear screaming, it's just a hallucination and don't go towards it. Although he seems to break his own rules when it says if the fire fails, follow the light. So perhaps whoever made this was starting to give in to the hallucinations themselves. Also, keep in mind the name of the person who made this, Jack Wilder. The other time that we've heard Jack mentioned was in the artificial intelligence episode. So given the story that was mentioned in that one, it says, Jack tried to get away 
as Mary could not, before becoming something else. Our next episode titled Sleep Image Visualizer is given to us by Harbinge Technologies, the same people who did the storm safety tips. In it, we see a device that seems to be exactly what it says, a sleep image visualizer, or in other words, it can allow your dreams to be seen while you're awake. It describes the way to work the system as placing what appears to be headphones around an aluminum dome. This would be the same aluminum dome that was shown in Storm Safety Tips. We then get some examples of what images the sleep image visualizer can create, such as Levi Jacobs, who was asleep for six minutes and received this incredibly comforting image of a face peering around a doorway. Our next is Adrian Gordons, who was asleep for four minutes and saw what appears to be an observatory. This makes sense given the connections to a potential alien takeover. And then our last two are more interesting, where we then get Jack Dean. Now, in a community post made by Gemini Home Entertainment, we see a missing person image of a Jack Wilder Dean. This means that this Jack mentioned now, Jack Dean, is the same Jack Wilder who made the Wilderness Survival video as well as the Jack mentioned in the artificial intelligence video. Jack was asleep for three days and he saw a man by his bed, sitting there simply watching him. We then get our final person with Joseph Allen, who it says never woke up, and his image was that of a giant dark mass rising up over the horizon. Now, not to get too distracted on that last point, but remember how I said you can play the Lethal Omen game yourself? Well, one of the four endings that you can get in that game is of this image of a giant dark thing rising up over the horizon. Keep in mind, in the Lethal Omen video seen on the channel, the ending is the iris appearing in the sky. For that reason, I believe this giant dark mass is the iris which was shown in our solar system, or in other words, the source of all of this. Also, the fact that Joseph never woke up is probably not great neither is jack being asleep for three days but i'll talk about what happened to him at the end our next episode is called games for kids brought by optica video it starts fairly normal showing several different games that kids can play with friends while this may be looking a little too deep i think it should be mentioned that all of the games mentioned feature an it character or in other words, one kid being chased by other kids or vice versa. Regardless, it seems pretty normal until we get to a game called Feed the Woods. In Feed the Woods, it tells the children to wait for their parents to fall asleep before gathering their friends and walking into the woods until they don't see the lights before screaming at the top of their lungs. In the previous games mentioned, it would use a red arrow to show where the kids would be while the game was going on. Now we see a red arrow pointing into the darkness and showing us sad faces. The implication being that these scared children are now out there in the dark. We then get another image of Hungry Eye itself before we see a cop car that is pulled underground by one of these arms from either the hungry eye or a wood crawler. It says the game is over when quote, the forest is fed. It then ends on the positive note where it shows an arrow pointed at earth and says, found you. So we see here that this marketing that is supposed to be aimed at children to show them fun games to play, tells them to run into the middle of the woods at night and scream. And then the game is over when the forest is fed. My theory here is similar to the theory that Inside a Mind has. Remember back in the camp video, how it says that these men would approach the camp counselor every night until a deal was made and they didn't bother them anymore? Well, it seems like the deal that was made was that instead of attacking the adults, that these creatures would instead take the children. That would explain why this video is being produced to tell children to do this very risky behavior. Even the visual of the cop car being pulled underground implies that perhaps the police were looking for these missing kids before they themselves were made victims. Also, the underground thing's going to be important in a second, but wait on that for now. And of course, the ending where it shows a giant red arrow pointing at Earth saying, found you, is talking about these aliens that are coming to Earth in order to find us. In our next video, Advanced Mining Vehicle, we see NAMAD Technologies who have made an underground rover to explore cave systems. Again, everything's normal at first before it says that there is a microphone placed on the rover to hear nests. We then start to see these weird sort of red roots that seem to be hanging from the rocks of the cave itself. We then see the message that blood pumps through the garden's veins and the crops mature. This is another mention of whatever this entity is being referred to as a sort of plant, similar to nature's mockery and wilderness survival. The rover then gets a view of a hungry eye, 
that seems to attack it as the rover sinks to incredible depths before we lose transmission. So keep a few things in mind. Way back in the ocean video, we saw that whatever these things are, they're associated with this super deep tunnel at the bottom of the ocean. Not only that, but we've had several mentions that these things seem to burrow underground. So whatever these things are, they exist underground in cave systems and are cultivating a sort of nest, as they're called, or these roots to go up above ground. These roots could result in creatures such as nature's mockery. And as it mentions that blood flows through the garden veins, Maybe people aren't just being used as vessels for these skinwalkers or wood crawlers, but are also being used as food for these plants. And the hungry eye itself is used to either guard or cultivate these roots. To add weight to that theory, the creator Remy Abode refers to this hungry eye creature as the gardeners. We then get more details about that in our next video, Deep Root Disease. It starts out with the belief that we are referring to a disease that involves plants, hence the title, Deep Root Disease. Until when describing what the disease does, it says that the roots try to make contact with bone. And when showing how the disease seems to take over, we get an image or short video of a person sleeping. It talks about the symptoms being sores, sprouting of more roots from the person, muscle spasms, and when it says trying to figure out if someone has deep root disease, one of the things to look for is unrecognizable smells in their home. On top of that, it says that if someone's infected by it, they may stop dreaming, until it eventually says that the person becomes something else. So this deep root disease, which can be associated with the root seen in the mining video, seems to infect people, dig down into their bone, and infect their system until they become something else. Now the line about looking for strange smells in the home tells me that this directly comes from nests or burrows made in people's houses. So it seems that the way the life cycle for these creatures work is the hungry eyes create these roots that infect people and either turn them into nature's mockery or wood crawlers or perhaps both before the wood crawlers then burrow beneath people's houses catch more people whose bodies they use as vessels and whose blood they use as fuel for their garden so that they can create more this sort of slow methodic building of essentially an army would explain why these things have been in motion as the moonlight acres video mentioned since 1935. Our next video called Monthly Progress Report is a report from Regnad Computing. This is a specific look at the AI that was mentioned in both Lethal Omen and the AI video. It says that the AI was created for failure prevention and computer processing. As a matter of fact, it says that Lethal Omen was created as a means to show the graphical advancements that their computing power is now capable of. When talking about the Artificial Computer Learning System, or ACL, that they've built, we then get a mention of their client. It says that their client spearheaded their AI technology and allowed them to become as powerful as they currently are. We then learn that we are going to see direct contact made from Regnad to their client themselves. We're then shown computers which seem to be covered in these sort of roots that are the same roots shown in deep root disease and advanced mining vehicle. So obviously Regnad is infected to some capacity. Regnad gives a prompt to which their client responds. We're then shown an antenna array before we see a view of what the client is as it appears to be a giant glowing light in space, either a hungry eye or most likely the iris itself, the source of all of this. Regnad gives the prompt Earth to which the client responds, Mary sees the gateway die. Sleeping ones are eaten whole. The vessel floats into the maw, the jaw unhinges. So when asked about the earth itself, it says that Mary sees the gateway die. If you'll remember, the gateway is what Saturn's rings were referred to as in the solar system video. Before then saying that sleeping ones are eaten whole, the vessel floats into the maw, the jaw unhinges. All of these lines imply that this creature or the iris consumes entire planets at once, saying that at first Saturn died, and the phrase sleeping ones are eaten whole most likely implies that the entire planet, which is again the vessel that floats, will simply be consumed all at once by this creature when, as it says, the jaw unhinges. What's also really interesting about this is the layout that we see the iris responding in, or the client, 
is the exact format as the story or children's story that was told in the AI video. Because if you look at the screen as the client is talking, it's in the exact same format as the AI poem, which is why earlier I implied that whatever was being said on screen was not an AI and instead an actual story of something happening. Regnad then gives the prompt of Moonlight, which is in reference to Moonlight Acres, to which the client says, new things roam the feeding grounds. The harbinger guards in vain. Mary hears a creaking sound. The hungry eye is welcomed. So when asked about Moonlight Anchors, which seems to be a place where the adults, or at least a few of the adults, have made a deal to sacrifice creatures to this entity or entities, it refers to Moonlight Acres as the feeding ground. The line, the Harbinger guards in vain, is interesting as we have a reference to something known as Harbinger technology. The line, the Harbinger guards in vain, implies that the Iris is saying that whatever Harbinger Technologies does is not going to work. And if you look at the fact that Harbinger Technologies tried to tell us about the swarms that could be coming in storm safety tips, as well as the sleep image visualizer, it seems that they're trying to help. We then get another reference to Mary with the phrase, Mary hears a creaking sound and the hungry eye is welcomed. We're gonna figure out about Mary in just a second, but the Hungry Eye is Welcomed goes back to the camp video in which Hungry Eyes were trying to be welcomed into these cabins. The final prompt given by Regnat is Jack, to which the computer simply says four times in a row, Jack is with us now, before saying Jack is us now. And then finally, the episode ends on the message, that the client will be in person in about seven months. So if Jack has been trying to help us this whole time and now the Iris is saying that Jack is with us now, things didn't work out so great for Jack, but we're going to see more details with that with the next story that we're gonna talk about right now. In the next episode, Christmas Eve Party, we see Moonlight Acres Christmas Eve Party, which of note is the fact that the video coordinator, Barry Johnson, was one of the vessels that was mentioned in the camp video. Or in other words, Barry Johnson was one of the people who let the hungry eye in. And then very interestingly, we see that our videography was done by Jack and Mary Dean. So not only is that a direct mention of Jack and Mary themselves again, but it also shows us that they were either siblings or more likely married. But if you'll remember in the original poem mentioned in the fourth episode, it says that Jack jumped over the river and Mary went down it. We're then shown in the video what seems to be a wood crawler attack on a normal Christmas Eve party before a giant amalgamated beast is shown at the door trying to come in. We then hear screaming, which if played backwards, turns from screaming into the phrase, Jack, it's out here, let me in. In the final shots, we see whatever this beast is breaking in, to which we're shown a blurred out picture of a man named Alex and Jack, and then finally we see that the giant beast was Mary. So it seems like what was happening here was Jack and Mary were trying to escape from these creatures before they were overwhelmed. Jack managed to get away, Mary did not. So now Mary is become a vessel for these creatures and Jack is being attacked by this vesseled form of her. And this thing is using her distorted voice to try to convince Jack to let her inside. So that goes back to the theory that these roots infect people and then turn them into these giant wood crawler creatures. So while it seems this episode ends rather ambiguously, the fact that we know Mary was a creature and then in the previous video, the Iris said Jack is with us now, once again implies that Jack didn't make it. We then have our final video at this point, which is called Home Invasion Help, brought to us by Optica Video, the same people who made games for kids. The video begins by implying that this is a way to survive a home invasion, before you quickly find out that it is the opposite and it's teaching people how to break into a house. This is done when it talks about breaking a window and how it says it may alert the prey. It also says that prey can be drawn to the door by knocking on it. It says one of the best ways to break into a house is to burrow underground and use that to move between nests. Before we get the horrifying line that after you make your way into the house that you should enter prey via the proboscis. So we get more details now from Optica 
about what these wood crawlers do. They try to find a way to enter into a house rather quietly or draw people out before essentially stabbing them and filling them with these sort of roots. That then allows them to take the people's place and operate essentially as skinwalkers as seen in the very first video on the channel. We then switch back over to found footage in which we see someone walking through a house that seems to be covered in these red roots. Until eventually we start to see people whose entire form is that of roots itself. Up until we see someone in a chair who still has an eye which when the camera is shown at it the eye moves indicating that this person is still alive while being consumed by deep root disease. Finally, the cameraman is attacked by something that seems to be a wood crawler and the transmission goes out. So whenever these wood crawlers attack and fill people with this deep root disease, they become these sort of infected hosts that are slowly turned from the inside out. And it seems that in the end, whoever our cameraman was, didn't make it. So that was all of the episodes and while I talked a lot about what everything could mean I want to put the final bow tie on it now. I'm going to make the bold claim and say that every found footage clip that we see is from Jack Dean. So the found footage that was seen in The World's Weirdest Animals, the found footage seen in Jack Wilder's Survival Guide, which makes sense, and the found footage seen in this last one. What seems to happen is these creatures came from the iris to Earth. Once on Earth, they began to cultivate underground, or at least the Hungry Eyes did, or gardeners as they're known, to create these roots that then infect people with deep root disease, which turns them into wood crawlers and makes them continue to get more people. Jack's wife, Mary, was killed by one of these things, to which he then dedicated himself to trying to stop them, which is what led him to making the Wilderness Survival video, as well as filming these things any opportunity he got. Although sadly, as mentioned and seen at the ending of Home Improvement Help, whenever he's attacked by these wood crawlers, that seems to be the actual point of his death or his conversion into a vessel, which again gives credence to the line, Jack is us now. So where does something like Red Nag and Optica come in? While I don't believe that this is the creatures themselves, because what would these hungry eyes and wood crawlers have to do with camera work and video making, it seems that they don't even know how humans walk. I believe that there are certain groups of people on Earth who have adopted the if you can't beat them, join them mindset, and such as Regnad Computing, who is building computer software to help these things and committing communication with them. Regnad is trying to use this entity for their own benefits, and perhaps they think that they may be safe in seven months whenever their client comes. Also, Regnad is just danger backwards, so they can't really be the good guys, can they? And also, Optica would be the bad guys, as your only two contributions are how to break into people's houses and telling children to run into the woods and scream at night. Optica, especially the way it's written with the exclamation point, seems to be optical, which is again a reference to the iris and the hungry eye. Optica may be another company similar to this, or even more specifically, it could be the videos put together by the camp counselors as mentioned in order to make a deal with this creature. That's one of the reasons I feel comfortable saying that perhaps Regnad made a deal because we know for a fact that the Moonlight Acres themselves made a deal with these things. There's also a few that I can't say for sure if they're one way or the other because they've only been mentioned once, so I'll just call them neutral for now like Geneva and the NAMAD mining systems, which these could just be innocent bystanders who aren't sure really of what's going on. Although maybe not with NAMAD because it like specifically talked about what the roots do and how they use blood, but again, there's only one video of them, so I can't really say where they lie. And that explains why there's a lot of conflicting info between different videos, such as Harbinge says, whatever you do, don't listen to the radio, and then Regnat says, go ahead, listen to the radio, it's fine, just do whatever it says. There's still several questions unanswered, such as what's the purpose of the bunker or the voices heard on the radio? What's the purpose of the speaker tower and how would that defend you? Which, since it was put out by Harbinge Technologies, I would say maybe that speaker tower actually does something. Who is Alex that was shown at the end of the Christmas video pictured with Jack? And of course, where does this all end? Which is why, if you didn't know, this series is still ongoing. I talked to Remy himself, the creator of this, which is not only a fan of a channel, which thank you, Remy, I'm sure you're watching this. This is fantastic content and I couldn't thank you enough for it, but he's still actively making these videos and there's going to be more in the future. So if this sounds cool to you, which if it doesn't, I can't help you, but this story's still ongoing. 
If it ever reaches a final conclusion, then maybe I'll make an update on it. But what I would rather happen is now that I have given you the tools to get started, you subscribe to his channel that is linked below, check out his Patreon and everything else, and then you start building your theory from there. Because at the end of the day, this is my own opinion about what this story could mean, as well as other people have theirs. So there's nothing better than for you to take this information and then go watch it for yourself because I promise you it's worth your time. So thank you so much, Remy Abode, for this fantastic series. As someone who loves horror and someone who is very upset with how it's treated in the majority of mainstream avenues, I'm so thrilled to see something like this not only be incredible, but continue to be successful. So if you get nothing else out of this video, go watch Gemini Home Entertainment. I promise it's worth your time. But aside from that, thank you all for watching. Um, this is just a fun video that I wanted to do to talk about something that I think is really neat. So I hope that you enjoyed. I hope that this was worth your time. I love talking about it. I love researching this kind of thing. And uh, thank you so much to Caitlin again for editing this because this is just fun to me and I enjoy it and I'm so happy to be a part of it. Now, I want to mention once again about this little dude, the makeshift guy who I love to death. He's going to be linked in the description below, but he is only going to be available for two more weeks um, and then he's gone forever. Uh, but the, it's really cool the way that it works because if it ever, if I ever get another deal, with them, I'm, to be honest, between us, I'm not sure if I will or not, I don't know. But this guy will never be made again. It will have to be a different model. This is a one-time offer, so two more weeks and he's gone. And then after those two weeks, they're all gonna be made and shipped out. So again, link in the description, letting you know about that. But thank you so much to everyone for watching. Thank you so much to my subscribers. Thank you guys for 300,000 subscribers. Um, I'm blown away. I can't believe it. I, and I know I do this all the time, but I, I couldn't believe I hit 10,000, right? And now I'm at 300,000 and it doesn't even seem like a real number. It's just so outstanding to me that I've come this far and thank you all so much for that. Thank you to every one of you. Thank you to my patrons. Thank you to my top tier patrons pictured here. I, I love you all to death. Um, the fact that you would support me in the way you do just blows my mind and I can't thank you enough. So uh, to everyone, I hope that this video was enjoyable. Uh, I hope that it was worth your time, and I hope that you check out Gemini Home Entertainment because he deserves it and you deserve it. Um, but either way, just thank you all for watching. Thank you for your day. I hope that you enjoy. There will be more videos out soon. Uh, but once again, just thank you for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.